folks, Will from MinIO here, and I'm going to show you a demo of some of the lifecycle management tools that you saw in our last video. Let's take a look at some code. First off, I'm going to, here in my lifecycle directory, I'm going to set up an MCMB on MinIO1. I have two servers set up, MinIO1, MinIO2, and this is going to go to a bucket, OLM. Okay. This creates a bucket for me. I'm going to go ahead and enable versioning on this as well. MC version, enable, minio one bucket, versioning is enabled. So I have a versioned bucket available for me here. I'm going to set this bucket to expire objects after 30 days. MC ILM rule add. I'm adding a rule. And this rule is going to be on minio one bucket OLM. And the rule is I'm going to expire after a certain number of days. And that is going to be a 30-day expiration. That creates my lifecycle configuration rule. It gives me an ID. That ID is going to allow me to go back and make edits later. Now, I'll show you how you can get those IDs later. I don't have to write down this ID and save it or anything like that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to add one more rule. Since I'm version, I'm going to deal with my non-current versions as well. I'm going to do ILM rule add, and this is again on minio1 bucket OLM, and this is going to be non-current expire days, and we set this up, and we're going to do 10 days for the non-current version, and also I'm going to get rid of any delete markers, expire, delete markers, expire, delete marker. All right. When I run this, again, it's going to create a new rule. Okay. If I do an MC ILM rule LS on my bucket, minio1, and when I do this MC ILM rule LS, what I see is I've got three entries here. There's only two rules because I only have two unique IDs. One of the IDs encompasses both the delete marker and the non-current version 10-day expiration. And the other rule is the 30-day expiration for the actual objects. Now, the reason why this shows up in three different lines is because the expire delete marker is a latest version rule, right? There's, the delete marker is always going to be the latest version. So we're going to get rid of that delete marker as well. So it's just the way that things get listed. Now, you also get the ID out so you can work with your IDs here. And if I want to do an edit of this, so let's say I want to actually edit one of these and change the non-current expire newer. I can do that. So I'm going to do an MC ILM rule edit. And this is going to use the ID. I'm going to go ahead and take our non-current version number, which is this one. That's our ID number. And I'm going to go ahead and include here a non-current expire newer two. And this is going to be on our MinIO bucket. Now, a couple of things you should notice from this command. First of all, you can put the, the MinIO <laughs> one bucket OLM anywhere you want, right? The flags get uh, accessed as you uh, include them, so you're set there. So now I have modified this rule. If I go back and I do the LS one more time, you can see there that now on my keep versions column, instead of being a zero, is now a two. But the other parts of the rule still exist. The other parts of the rule still exist. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm going to upload mccp sample.txt and I'm going to do a minio1 bucket olm and this is going to be expire.txt. Okay. And I'm going to upload that a few times so I have a few different versions. Okay, so there's five versions that I've uploaded. If I do now an MCLS versions on minio1, bucket OLM. Now, I have a keep versions of two. So you may be thinking to yourself, okay, great. He's only keeping two versions. Well, not true. I have all the versions there. Now, why are all the versions still there? Remember that it's an and. I have keep versions two. But my days to expire is 10. I haven't reached that 10-day expiration yet. 
If I want to change that, and I can change that pretty easily, I'm going to do that same MC edit again on the same command that I just had. And I'm going to change my non-current version expire days to zero. Non-current expire days zero. Okay. So this updates the rule. If I do my MCLS on my rules one more time. There you go. Now notice, this looks like the other rule is now gone. That's because I set the non-current expire days to zero, so it's not going to show up. Okay. But the keep versions is still there. So this is just a little bug in the MCILM rule LS. So when I do this, what's going to happen when I do my MCLS versions, everything is still there. Now, the reason why everything is still there is not because the rule is gone. It's not because anything has gone completely wrong here or anything like that. What I am seeing as a result of this is it's still waiting for my object lifecycle management scanning tool to go through and find these things. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the command again and we'll see that it gets expired. I showed you the MC ILM rule LS and now I've done this MC LS versions bin IO one bucket OLM and all the versions are still there even though we changed it and it looks like the rule is gone. So how do I know that the rule is still there? How do I know that it's still in effect when I can't see any effect of it? So what I'm going to do is let me show you this MC ILM rule LS again. MinIO1 bucket OLM. So if I do that one more time, what we see is it's still not there. But if I do this, if I do a dash dash JSON and I get the JSON output, take a look at this. You can see my expiration one and my expired object delete marker true is there. Notice though that there is also the non-current version expiration, non-current days zero, newer non-current versions two. So the rule is still there. It's just not popping out in the basic MC ILM rule LS. You have to use JSON to see it. This is just a minor bug again in the MC ILM rule LS, but you can always get all of your details with that JSON output. So now that we've given this a little bit of time to go through, let me do that MC LS with versions again on MinIO1 bucket. There we go. And as you can see, now we only have the three versions left. We have the current version, which is V3, and we have the two newer non-current versions. So this lifecycle management tool is running. It's just it's taking a sweet time in the background is what's going on here. And that's something that happens with the object lifecycle management scanner. The object lifecycle management scanner is a very low priority task, so it's not going to spike your server every time it runs. So that just means you may have to wait a little bit, especially if you've got something that's expiring very quickly. So let's take a look at transitioning. Now I've already set up a secondary tier called warm tier in my system. And I can do a check of that very simply. MC ILM tier check minio one warm tier. And that's what I called it, warm tier. And there it goes. So my remote tier connectivity check for warm tier is successful. Now what's going to happen here is I'm actually going to be transitioning objects into a bucket called minio2 warm. So if I do an MC LS, and I'm going to go ahead and do a recursive on that one, on minio2 warm. Okay. Now there's nothing there yet because I haven't set up any rules. Okay. But by doing this, I'm actually able to say, okay, let's go ahead and use this warm bucket on minio2 as my warm tier. So what this is going to allow me to do going forward is actually set up some transition rules as well. So I'm going to set up an MC ILM rule to transition objects after seven days. This is going to be an MC ILM rule add transition days seven. And I have to use a transition tier as well. Warm tier. Use the actual name, otherwise it won't work. And that's going to get, again going to be on minio one bucket OLM. Okay. So there we go. This is adding yet another a life cycle rule to my system. If I do this MC ILM 
rule ls, minio1, bucket olm. So if I do my mc ilm rule ls on minio1 bucket olm, now I can see that I have a transition rule as well as an expiration rule. And I still have my expiration rule for zero days as well. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to do a non-current transition days. So this is for my latest version. What about my non-current ones? Well, I'm going to do an mc ilm rule add non-current transition days. And I'm going to set that to zero as well. And I'm going to non-current transition tier, warm tier, minio1, bucket olm. Okay. So I'm setting up another zero day rule, which is going to instantly transition these. Now it's going to basically take any non-current one and transition it, which means that my expiration rule, which keeps two versions, still comes into play. So the two versions will be transitioned, but everything else is expired. So let's go ahead and add that. This adds the lifecycle configuration. And the fun part about this is that now we'll be able to see items getting transitioned. But let me do that MC ILM rule LS. And we're going to do this on minio one bucket OLM. And we're going to output it to JSON just so we can see everything. There we go. And let me scroll up a little bit. So here is my expiration 30 days. That's still in effect. And it expires the object delete markers still. My non-current version expiration, non-current days, zero. Newer non-current versions, two. So it's going to keep two versions for me. I also still have this warm tier transition for the latest object, day seven. And I also have my non-current days zero for the non-current version. And all of these are enabled. So now what we can do is an MCLS with versions on minio1 bucket olm. So now let's go ahead, now that you can see that we've got all of these rules in place, let's go ahead and run that MCLS versions minio1 bucket olm one more time. And there you go. You can see that our latest version is still on the main tier standard. But my two older versions, which have not been expired yet, are on the warm tier now. So this is immediately moving non-current versions to the warm tier. So what do we see when we look at the warm tier? Let me go ahead and do a clear here. If I do an MC LS-R for recursive, and I'm going to do minio2 warm. Okay, So that's the bucket that we had on minio2. What do I see? I don't see anything named expire text. <laughs> That's certainly true. What I do see is this linkage with a whole bunch of hash codes. There's a bucket OLM in there, but there's a whole bunch of prefixes as well. And this is how we're going to store the non-current versions on my transition tier, on my warm tier. Now notice this is also listed as standard. Well, it is standard on the warm tier because this is where they actually live. But I'm going to get all the information about these objects from the main tier, my standard tier, minio1. So I do the MC stat with versions on minio1 bucket olm expire.txt. What am I going to see? Well, I see my main one there is right where you expect it to be, but xamz storage class warm tier on my older two versions. I still access this expire text. If I wanted to do a get against these objects, I would still do it from minio1, not minio2, obviously, because minio2 has all those random characters in there. I have no way of tracking it. Okay, so this is how we're going to keep track of all of our objects using our transition tier and our expiration rules. Okay, so that's everything that we've got for our MinIO object lifecycle management demonstration. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to contact us, you can reach out to us using any of the methods you see here on the screen. You can also chat with us interactively on slack.min.io, or you can just give us a comment here on the video. Thanks, and we'll see you for the next one.